Hey guys, how's it going? Justin here with Keystone Mountain Outdoors. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Griffin Armament's new Camlock QD system. This is a QD system for your pistol suppressor for use on a Browning style tilt and barrel handgun. If you're not familiar with why you would want this or the advantages to it, we're going to go over it in this video. This is actually something that's very, very cool, and a lot of people seem to be interested in it. I was definitely interested in it. I was one of the first ones. As soon as they announced this about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I ran out and I ordered it off their website. Now, if you've used a pistol can on a, on a pistol that has a Browning style toting barrel, what you know is that you need a booster assembly, Nielsen device, whatever you want to call it, inertial decoupler. We're just going to call it a booster assembly for, for simplicity of the video. But basically what it is, is you have a piston, you have a spring, and you have a coupler that holds it in. You need your suppressor to be a lot, to allow your barrel to kind of spring a little bit. That way the barrel can tilt and unlock and your semi-automatic can be a semi-automatic, right? So if you wanted to use a pistol can on a handgun before, what you had to do was you had to get the, the piston that corresponds to the thread pitch of your barrel. And if you have a couple different barrels that are different thread pitches, well, guess what? While you're out at the range, if you want to run that can on those different guns, you're going to be unscrewing it and you're going to be changing pistons. Changing pistons takes time and it also makes your fingers all dirty from the soot and shit, the carbon, the lead that's on the piston. These cans get kind of dirty in the back end here. Now, with Griffin's cam lock system, basically they have a special piston and they make these pistons for a lot of different cans. For example, this is a Rugged Obsidian. They make the, the uh, piston adapters for Rugged Obsidians. They make them for Silencer Co. cans. They make them for CGS cans. They make them for Dead Air cans. There's a bunch of different... Uh, a bunch of different pistons that they make to utilize this cam lock system with other manufacturers cans so it's not a griffin armament specific thing but you buy the piston and then you buy these barrel mounts and they're basically like a little muzzle device for your pistol the cool thing about these is they have they it utilizes a taper system with coarse threads and then you have three quarter inch wrench flats so you can tighten this down with a three quarter inch socket. Griffin recommends torquing this to about 20 inch pounds. That way it stays on there pretty good. After you do all that stuff, you basically put it on, it rotates about a quarter turn and it's on there. That's as simple as it is. I'll show you guys again. Put it on there, It'll. Uh, you gotta get it to drop down in. So see, you might have to rotate it, but as you see, once it drops down in, literally a quarter turn that taper seats if you want to snug it up you can snug it up but it's a taper system so you don't want to go ham on it otherwise it's going to get kind of galled on there as it heats up but give it a little snug and then it's as simple as that i'll sit here and do it for a minute just so you guys can see rotates on comes off rotates get it to drop down rotates on simple very very simple it is super super easy and again there's a taper before the threads so that taper is going to seal it so that way it stays on here and it's also going to seal the gases from getting up on the threads and carbon locking it now if for whatever chance you do get this thing uh, stuck say you don't tighten the barrel mount enough it does have wrench flats so you could use the wrench flats to your advantage to help break it loose from your suppressor if say it does come off the wrench flats also make it very easy to install it so I'm sure you guys are wondering what's cost on something like this well the piston is about $80 and the barrel mounts are about $60 so it's a little bit more expensive of a piston than your traditional pistons but it's not bad and then the barrel mount is of course something that you would have to buy that otherwise you wouldn't need but the advantage of having the QD and the advantage of having the taper system to hold it on there that's another huge advantage to this with a pistol can I'm sure you guys have seen guys post pictures of bath strikes and the reason why there's so many baffle strikes with pistol cans is people don't tighten their can enough on their pistol and that in conjunction with the, the vibration that's exhibited in a handgun the vibration makes these cans walk loose now being that you're torquing that barrel mount to your barrel that's not going to come loose and being that there's tapers in here between the uh the piston and the barrel mount it tapers onto there and those tapers allow it to hold really good so you're not going to have an issue with your can walking loose another big advantage is the different thread pitches so this is a half by 28 sig p226 
So what I have here is a 45 ACP with 0.578 by 28 threads. As you can see, I have the barrel mount attached. This barrel mount does look different than the half by 28 one. It is a hair longer, but that's because of the large threads on the 0.578 by 28. But with the same piston, you don't have to change it. You put it on there, rotate it, seat the taper, and it's good to go. So it's very, very easy. And you saw, I didn't have to change a piston or anything like that. If I was to have a traditional system and go from the 1911 to the P226 or vice versa, I would have to take the back end of my suppressor apart and change the piston. So that's a huge, huge, huge advantage to the Griffin system. So one thing I want to bring up about the Griffin Camelock system is like anything in life, it can't come with its pros without exhibiting some negatives. The negative things that I would have to say about this are just the fact that if you want to take your pistol apart for cleaning, you're either going to have to remove this or you're going to have to slide, take your slide off and slide your barrel forward. That's personally what I would probably recommend guys doing. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, Break your pistol down like you would break down any, any you know, whatever pistol it is. Break it down the way you're supposed to break it down. But whenever you get to the point of removing your barrel, what you could do is you could either just pick your barrel up and move it forward, clean in there. That would allow you to get a rod down in there to clean out your actual barrel itself. And then whenever you're done, you just pop it back together. Or of course, like I said, you could just simply use your three quarter inch wrench and uh, break this loose, take it off, and you'd be able to remove your barrel like normal. So there's different ways of doing it, uh, but I just wanted to bring up that moving the barrel forward. On most guns, you're able to do that, and I feel that that would be plenty suffice and save you from having to remove it from your barrel every single time. But that's just one negative that I've really found with this system. Other than that, and maybe cost, those are really the only two things that I could say would be negatives. I don't really think that the cost is a huge negative because it's only your pistons are about uh, $80 or so and these barrel adapters are about $60 or so and that's on Griffin's website. So if you find them at Sonsor Shop or Capital Armory or Hansa Brothers or wherever, they're probably going to end up being a little bit cheaper long term. But the ability to actually put it on here and literally a quarter turn have it QD on and you have the taper to not worry about it. I feel that the, the pros kind of outweigh the negatives on this one, but I definitely wanted to talk about negatives. So let's go out to the range and let's put some rounds through it. Let's shoot it on a couple different hosts and let's show you guys how it performs whenever we get the can hot and uh, moving it around at the range and stuff.
All right, guys. So as you guys saw, I took this thing out to the range. We shot it a little bit. We played around with it. What I want to do in this part of the video is share my opinions and thoughts on it with you guys. So this part of the video is going to be completely subjective. So personally, my first impressions of this are that I really do like it. I think that if you're the type of person, though, that only runs one can on one host, then maybe it's not completely practical for you. There are advantages to it, such as the fact that it utilizes the taper system, so that way you don't have to worry about your can walking loose. But if you're somebody that's just running one can on one host, then it might not be worth the investment to you. But if you're somebody that's running one can on a couple different hosts, especially if they're threaded different thread pitches, or especially, especially if you're doing nine millimeter and 45 through a 45 can, those are definitely gonna be threaded differently. So if you're changing pistons a lot, this is gonna save you changing pistons, which is gonna save you time, and it's also gonna keep your fingers a little bit more clean. As you guys saw, there are disadvantages to it, such as you're gonna to have to remove it to clean the barrel, but that's really not a big deal. It only takes a couple seconds. And as you guys saw, there's ways around it if you really don't wanna remove it all the time. So in summary, I think it's a really good product. It's not without its faults, but its faults are very minor. And personally, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to you. As I said, if you're somebody like me that's running one can on a couple different hosts, or in, especially if they have different pistons, different threaded pistons, uh, this is something that's gonna be definitely worthwhile to you. While it does have a cost associated with it, think about it. You're gonna have the suppressor for the rest of your life. You're gonna have different pistols for the rest of your life to run the suppressor on. There's an investment with it, you know, an $80 piston and a $60 barrel mount. I'm sure once these hit, you know, the different silencer shops and capital armories of the world, uh, maybe they'll come down in price, maybe they'll be cheaper, uh, but still it's not a bad deal. The piston's a little bit more expensive and the barrel mount is relatively inexpensive for what it is. It's definitely cheaper than a rifle muzzle device. So I guess in summary, I really do like it. And I think that if you're interested in it, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to pick one up and at least give it a try. I'd love to hear your thoughts and input. Do any of you guys out there have one of these? If you do, share your experiences down below. If you're interested in one, share your experiences. If there's something glaring about this that I didn't mention or something that you feel is worthwhile, let us know. Guys, I appreciate all the support that's been coming into the channel. You guys are absolutely awesome. As always, remember to train hard, shoot fast, and most importantly, be safe. God bless.